our last episode, we spotlighted my offshore cruise training expedition on Mahina Tiare with John and Amanda Neal. You saw me weather some storms, catch a fish, and enjoy some amazing entertainment from the locals. In this episode, we will focus on our preparations for our big adventure, moving out of our house and onto our boat, as well as getting our life raft serviced and learning how to use it. We'll also share our big Bon Voyage party and what life is like living in a marina. Just got to capture what it's like moving from yeah. a 2,800 square foot house down to a 44 foot boat. Wow. Sardine. Yeah. So basically, we're going to try to get everything that we're keeping, you know, all of our nice wood furniture, into here. We, we walled off this third bay, and we hired these guys to play a game of Tetris to try to get all of our furniture in here. Let's see how that works. This is what's left of our house. It's empty. Well, we still have a ton of crap we have to move onto the boat and crap that we need to throw away. Internet gets shut off tomorrow and we're trying to sell this sofa. Anybody want it? And Bubba's wondering what the hell is going on. And this is where we slept last night, a, just the box spring and mattress on the floor. And this is how we are, um, these are our closets now, bins with clothes that are going to go on the boat. We were eventually able to get all of the stuff we're keeping into that small space, and the house is now rented out. Charlie, what are you doing? Clearing out the bee berths so that we can reorganize it. Our boat is in complete disarray right now. And the chaos is uh, getting difficult to live with. So we are taking everything out. We're going to rebuild our boat <laughs> in a way in which we can live. Our V berth was packed to the rafters and it was just in a jumble. So we're going to pull everything out. We have, so there's some spaces down underneath the V berth where we can put things and uh, get things organized so we can actually live here. So we do have some storage space in the V berth hard to really see it but there's you know there's some spaces down there where we can put spares and things that we're not going to need on a regular basis moving on to a boat requires some pretty major adjustments one of the biggest for me has been learning to cook decent meals in a tiny galley with almost no counter space i'm constantly looking for places to just put things down but I'm determined to make this work and ensure that we eat just as well in our cruising life as we ever did in our land-based life. Know what I'm making? I'm making Thai tofu pineapple curry. Still getting used to my galley. Very tight, but I'm working on it. So how's this look? It's pretty good. Sorry for the messy table. Here's the results break out the chopsticks. Oh, I forgot to get chopsticks, sorry. I'm also trying to keep up with some of my regular kitchen practices, such as making fresh homemade yogurt. 
It's a bit more complicated on the boat, but definitely doable. So worst case scenario, this is our home <laughs> for, for a while. Now, four person, they basically give you starting point is four square feet of floor space per person. These tiles are one foot squares. So I'm on my knees here. I take up way more than four square feet. I take up cubic feet, a lot more than four of them. So I've never had a survivor tell me they wish it was smaller. Okay. And then you said you carry a, a dog? Yes, but he's uh, tiny. He's 10 pounds. I tell people, get a pet chicken. Tastes better than dog. Oh. And, you, and you don't get as attached. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's actually not true because I raised chickens and I named them all and I got attached to them. I couldn't eat my chickens. I ate their eggs, but I couldn't eat the chickens. <laughs> Home sweet home. You're more than welcome to climb in here. You're not gonna hurt anything. When I'm doing the service, I'm not gentle with them because you're not gonna be gentle with it if you're deploying. <laughs> well, let's hope this is the only time I ever see you in there. It's actually pretty comfy. Is it? It's going to be a tight fit. I don't believe we need it. Hopefully we never need it, period. Okay, through the bag, through the painter line. There's a knife right at the entrance. This one happens to be a folding knife, so you'll take it. It's also latched to the raft, so you can't lose it. Take it when it is time to get away from the vessel, cut this line and get separate from the vessel. Um, as long as the boat's float, most boats are going to float bow up, upside down, and they'll still have buoyancy, stay attached. Okay, so here's Leanne doing a final coat of varnish on our tow rails or cap rails. She's been working with Tim to uh, spruce these up before we take off. Get them all sealed and varnished looking nice. Do you have any words of wisdom? Yeah, don't fall in the water. And don't varnish in a Santa Ana wind. Let's see your technique. It's all in the brush strokes. What kind of varnish are you using? I have no idea. Tim, what kind of varnish are we using? All spar. All spar. All spar. It's got a nice look to it. And just look at the finished product my first time varnishing, and I think I did a pretty darn good job. They gleam. Yet another important project, replacing the manual pump head with an electric head. I swore I was not going to spend five years pumping that head every time I have to use it, and now I don't have to. All I do is push a button. Yay! Juliet came with a 5 kilowatt Northern Lights diesel generator that had just a little over 400 hours on it. These Northern Lights gen sets are considered to be highly reliable and often run tens of thousands of hours before requiring a major service. While weekend sailing, we rarely ran the gen set since we converted our refrigerator from AC power to DC. 
When we tried running it a couple years ago, it was hard to start, but we figured that it only needed a minor service, given the low hours, so we postponed the service until we were ready to depart for our extended cruising. Unfortunately, when we hired some expert diesel mechanics, they couldn't get the genset to start at all, even after doing all of the basic checks and adjustments. It seems the lack of use is what actually damaged it. Over the years, moisture from the damp engine room caused the valves to corrode into the cylinder head, resulting in a loss of compression. To fix this, the cylinder head had to be removed and sent to a machine shop for resurfacing. During the service, the mechanics also noticed a crack in the exhaust manifold. Fortunately, they had a good used manifold in their shop. After installing the new valves and water pump, the diesel gen set was put back together and we sure hope for a good outcome. This was super important to me, because without a working generator, we couldn't get a high output AC water maker, which I really wanted. Okay, so what's going on, Charlie? So we just had the cylinder head rebuilt on this um, generator diesel engine. Um, it had valves that corroded into the head, and that was causing it to lose compression. So it was not starting, and it had low power when it did start. Um, so they machined the head, they put in new valves, put in, put in a new raw water pump, um, new studs, cleaned it up, and now it starts no problem. I'm going to start it for the very first time. And first well, they say it starts no problem, but we're about to find out. First, I'm going to preheat it for 10 seconds. I mean, we, they say, we don't know. <laughs> I'm hit the start button. Oh, yeah, he's lost interest. Okay, so I'm just trying to go up to the marina um, building to change my laundry, do the little laundromat there. And I'm walk walking down the dock and there's this freaking big ass uh, sea lion here blocking my way. Now, they tend to get pretty angry when you disturb them so let's see if this one's gonna let me by yeah yeah oh my god jesus he's coming after me go oh, okay got rid of that dude i think i can go finish my laundry now it looks like a sea lion convention I think they told their friends. Uh oh, that is literally Bubba. That is Bubba trying. <laughs> yeah, Bubba, you don't want to do that. We finally did get the boat organized, and now it's home sweet home. We're each finding our favorite spots to hang out. Charlie likes the bench sate. I like to camp out beside the table, and Bubba seems to love his little bed in the quarter berth. As for how he's adjusting, I'll let him tell you. In our next episode, the adventure begins. We cast off the dock lines and set sail, saying goodbye to Channel Islands Harbor and to many friends who have supported us in our long journey to get here. We have our first overnight sail and pull into spectacular San Diego Harbor. And then, the moment we've been waiting for, the Baha Ha Ha kicks off. <laughs>